We have James Bond's car on the ice, accelerating along the ice so that it can make this jump. This angle is theta. The car is initially, and it doesn't really look like this, but let's say it's initially at this speed u1, which is actually 10 meters per second, and then it gets to this ramp and it speeds up the ramp. At some speed, we're going to call that u2. It, then it would just do this jump in the projectile path. We're going to say that it lands at the same height. And we'd like to know what force. So here's the rocket power, which would provide a force, Ft, that would accelerate the car from u1 to u2. So Ft is equal to, well, let's call that car has a mass m, is equal to m into u2 minus u1 divided by delta t, where delta t is the time it takes to get from here to here. Now in the clip, this is at about eight seconds. It arrives here at about 14 seconds. So delta T, we're gonna say that's 14 minus eight, so that's six seconds. Um, and then it's in the air. Well, it's, it's, it's in slow motion, but not too slow motion. So I think it's, a, it's in the air for about two seconds. So I'll say this is T 16 seconds. So we're gonna say that the time of the jump is equal to two seconds. Now we need to use this information to find out the thrust, Ft, that's what we're looking for. So the mass of the car, okay, we can estimate that, it's about 2,000 kilograms, let's say, two tons. Uh, we know U1, that's 10 meters per second, but we don't know what U2 is, and we have to figure that out from the clip. So we need to, first of all, find the angle of the ramp. So how do we do that? Well, we, we use trigonometry. So if we look at that clip, you can see that the height of it is about one person, which is about, let's say, two meters. The hypotenuse of the ramp is about one and a half cars. So one and a half cars is about six meters, which means that angle theta is two over six, or let's say the sine of that angle theta is two over six, which is one third. And we're just gonna keep that. I'm not actually gonna find out theta because I don't actually need it. I actually need sine theta. So given that sine theta is, is one third, uh, let's look at the projectile motion problem. Here we have, so I can even draw it in the X, Y plane if you like. And the car, it makes this leap. It has this angle theta uh, it's not a very good parabola, but it's essentially supposed to be a parabola. This is at, uh, we said this is 14 seconds. We said that this is 16 seconds. So let's just split it into horizontal and vertical motion. So horizontally, there isn't a lot of information because I don't, it's very hard to tell from that clip how, how far the car travels. So I don't know if we can get much from the X part. Whereas vertically, if we say that it lands at the same height, then we can use our equation h equals ut plus a half a t squared. Remember a is just gonna be, for the vertical part, it's minus g. t was the time in the air, which we said was two seconds. So let's put that in. h we're saying is zero because it's landing at the same level as it left, just about, again, it's a bit of an approximation. The u here is actually gonna be the component of u in the vertical direction. So remember, we said that would be, that's what we call U2. So this is going to be U2 sine, U2 sine theta. So here we'd have U2 sine theta times by T minus 5 T squared. See where I got the minus 5 from? It's just putting in G is equal to 10. Uh, well, and A is equal to minus G. If we, so we can solve that equation, we just end up with, u2 sine theta equals 5t, the other solution being t equals zero, but that doesn't tell us anything. Uh, and then we can put in the value of t, remember that's two, so we'll get u2 equals five multiplied by two divided by a third, that's our sine theta. So that means that the speed that it leaves the ramp at is about 30 meters per second. So we have the speed that it leaves the ramp at Let's plug that back into our thrust equation, F thrust, 
Well, F thrust is equal to M into U2 minus U1 divided by delta T, but we have all of these values. Remember, this delta T is actually going to be six seconds because it's the time it takes the car to speed up. So putting that in, we have two times by 10 to the three kilograms for the mass of the car times by, now there's our 30 for U2 minus 10 given in the problem as being the initial value divided by six and we end up with something like 6,670 newtons, which is the, is the force, this is the thrust required by the rocket.